in many places there are drinking water supplies where people don't have the kind of posh drinking water facilities we have um, so they're exposed and you see um, water aid always saying people are dying from disease causing organisms but at the same time we also have um, these toxic compounds produced by the algae that can be quite high concentrations in the water and if there's nothing to remove them they can cause short-term serious poisoning or they can cause long-term cancer, long-term poisoning. Cyanobacteria are wonderful microbes, they are bacteria, but they even led to the oxygenation of the planet many years ago. So they're really good, they're an essential part of the food web, but every once in a while certain strains and species can grow in mass growth because of usually um, human activity of nutrient pollution, which leads to mass growth which can cause fish kills and stuff like that, but also at the same time, they, they may produce toxins, which can lead to dead dogs, which you often see in the newspapers, dead sheep. Um, and so clearly it's a, a challenging problem. It seems to be increasing um, with climate change and, and extreme weather events. And also what we're also seeing is what once was a, a tropical cyanobacteria or blue-green algae, they're now being found in northern Europe. So you're seeing this geographical switch as well. So I've been working on Christine Winder's project, looking at the use of biochar to remove toxins from contaminated water, specifically toxins produced by cyanobacteria, so microcystins and things like that. And for that, we've been using biochar which I can show you some here, and it's basically just burnt natural products to form a charcoal. So we've got coconut shell, which is the first one that we tested, because it's a waste product in Sri Lanka, where we've been collaborating with. Then we've got cinnamon wood, glycidia wood, which is a big waste product over there, and also rubber wood. And so these are all different natural waste products that are being utilised as a source of biochar for our experiments. We then take that biochar and we mix it with some lake water, or loch water here in Scotland. <laughs> and that loch water contains a lot of microbes and bacteria that naturally live in that water source. And with using all these bacteria that are in there, then when we add the biochar, and we've got a flask like this with some biochar sitting in the bottom, the bacteria like to colonise the surface and within that population there's some bacteria that can be capable of degrading some of the toxins that might occur. In our case we're specifically looking at microcystins and we showed that these communities could degrade quite efficiently microcystin toxins in the water. And just now already in the water industry uh, we see granular carbon used in, in, in huge beds, sometimes the size of football pitches. So the material we are using, the beauty of that is we're, we're taking anything that could be potentially a waste product uh, and it could be produced at uh, industrial scale. But I think the lovely thing of what we've been showing is that it can be produced at, at a small scale and the methods we've developed, the, the biochar can be developed at a, a scale that could be just within one household or one village. Uh, so it could actually develop as a local industry for someone. So maybe someone in agriculture who has um, trimmings from trees or waste um, material. Things like coconut shells in Sri Lanka are a real nuisance because you know you, they produce masses of coconut shells 
Uh, and there's some reports of them blocking up waterways and causing flooding. So actually you're taking something as a waste product and turning it into something really useful. There's also studies where you can actually use some of the energy from that actually to fuel uh, things in a home or in a, an industry as well. Uh, so you're producing the biochar. The other nice thing with biochar is to remember that what you're doing is you're trapping carbon. So there's carbon in, in all organic material. If we burn wood completely till there's just ashes left, uh, you put all the carbon back into the atmosphere. But when you produce biochar, you leave a lot of the carbon actually in the biochar. So really you're trapping carbon and taking it out of the atmosphere and out of the system. Follow me, we're going into the culture room. So our technician, Len Montgomery, is in the culture room where he's harvesting some cyanobacteria. Uh, here's Len. This is where we grow all the cyanobacteria. We grow them here to produce the toxins to do all our work on. And I'll introduce you to, to Len. He's harvesting using our new membranology system, which is absolutely fantastic. It's taking the cyanobacteria from a large scale volume right down from 80 litres to one or two litres. Okay, so um, I've got a harvest going and we're uh... We're harvesting PCC7820, and as you can see, that's it there in this mini cell harvester. And I'm just going to top it up. Once it's topped up, it gets concentrated right down to one litre, where we then add methanol and uh, some uh, purified water before, it, um, before we make an extraction. It's all wrapped together, the sustainability cost efficiency is wrapped together with actually looking after the people. This, you know, the, the UN sustainability goals with that fresh water for all, clean drinking water for every person. Uh, that, we'll, we'll never achieve that through building bigger and better huge water treatment plants. These, these can be important for, for city environments but so much of the population are in smaller rural communities where they're literally collecting water on a small scale. Uh, and if we could do that, we can transform uh, the lives of many people because often, often women, especially on children, are walking long distances to, to get fresh water from a standpipe or something like that. If we could actually be able to produce something that's much closer to home and of much better quality, then we're actually moving towards uh, fresh, clean drinking water for everyone. <laughs>